Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, let us discuss about CDNA library. So before entering into the definition and explanation of the CDNA library, firstly you have to know about the synthesis of CDNA. And after the completion of this explanation of the synthesis of CDNA, let us enter into the topic of construction of CDNA library, where it is one of the most important topic. So firstly, let us discuss about the synthesis of CDNA. So what is meant by the CDNA? CDNA is nothing but the complementary DNA. Okay. So we know eukaryotic cell. We know about the eukaryotic cell. And in that eukaryotic cell, nucleus will be present. And in the nucleus, the genetic material will be present, where we all of us know that. And that genetic material is nothing but the DNA. And now the DNA undergoes transcription and translation process in such a way that it forms the mRNA. So mRNA is nothing but the messenger RNA which will be in mature form. Mature form means what? Mature form is nothing but where only presence of the exons will be present, where introns will not be present because during the process of translation what happens is that the splicing mechanism occurs. Splicing is nothing but where introns will be removed and all of the exons will get conjoined with each other and forms this mRNA. And this mRNA will be in the mature form because only exons will be present. Exons are nothing but the coding sequences. Okay, so now this mRNA consists of 5 prime end as well as a 3 prime end and at the 3 prime end polyatyl will be present. Polyatyl means what? Polyatyl is nothing but the adenine residues or else adenine nucleotide residues will be present at the 3 dash end or as 3 prime end. And now what you are going to do? You are going to add oligo DT primer. Oligo DT primer is nothing but this primer consists of thymine nucleotides. Why only thymine nucleotides we are going to choose here? Because this thymine nucleotides will be complementary to this adenine nucleotides. So you are going to add this oligo DT primer to this mRNA. So once you are going to add, then along with that you are going to add this reverse transcriptase enzyme to this mRNA. So now what happens? So now this reverse transcriptase enzyme will move from 3 prime to 5 prime direction. Normal another case or uh, normal case I'm saying if you take any type of enzyme, different type of enzyme rather than this reverse transcriptase, what happens is that if you add another type of enzyme, then it starts moving from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. But here we are going to use reverse transcriptase enzyme in such a way that it starts moving from 3 prime to 5 prime direction because here the name itself indicates the reverse transcriptase where it moves from 3 prime to 5 prime direction. And once this enzyme starts moving from 3 prime to 5 prime direction, then the synthesis of cDNA occurs complementary DNA. So why the name the complementary DNA has been given for it because this DNA strand which has been synthesizing will be complementary the nucleotides which are present in this DNA will be complementary to this mRNA nucleotides. So this reverse transcriptase enzyme will move towards the 5 prime end in such a way that the synthesizing of new cADNA strand will be moved towards the 5 prime dash only. Right. So now what happens in the next stage. Now we are going to add the alkaline or its NaOH. So why are you going to add this alkaline or its NaOH? Because this mRNA will get degraded once you add this alkaline or NaOH. So we don't need any more this mRNA. So why are you going to need, need this mRNA? Only for synthesizing the cDNA for its complementary strands. Right? So now you are going to add the alkaline as well as the NaOH. So once you add this alkaline and NaOH, then immediately the RNA, mRNA will get degraded. Right. So now the cDNA will get synthesized continuously because the functioning of this reverse transcriptase also will be done continuously where it moves to the 5 prime end and the synthesizing of the cDNA will also occur. So as it is moved towards the 5 prime end then it forms a hairpin loop over here. Right. And now immediately you are going to add the DNA polymerase enzyme. So now the DNA polymerase enzyme will start moving towards 5 prime to 3 prime end. Because it is DNA polymerase, it is not reverse transcriptase, it is an enzyme called as DNA polymerase where the synthesis of DNA occurs from 5 prime to 3 prime end. Right? And now don't forget the hairpin loop will get attached towards this all of this to this both double standard complementary DNA. Why I'm going to call here that is a double standard complementary DNA because two strands of this complementary DNA is present. And here hairpin loop will be present. The loop which will be formed by this complementary DNA during this reverse transcriptase enzyme is called as hairpin loop. Right. So now hairpin loop will be formed. So why this hairpin loop? This hairpin loop is mainly present only for attachment of these two strands. So now in the next step what you are going to do? In the next step you are going to add S1 nucleus enzyme. So what does this S1 nucleus enzyme will do? It will cleave this hairpin loop and once this hairpin loop will get cleaved then two strands will be formed and that strands are nothing but the double stranded complementary DNA. 
so finally the complementary dna has been formed right so this is about the synthesis of complementary dna so now let us discuss the construction of cdna library so before entering into the topic of the cdna library we know the normal uh, what we say book library so what is meant by this book library that's nothing but the library consists of different type of books not only similar books right different type of books will be present together which is called as a library so in the same way in this case the construction of cdna library will occur so how this cdna library construction occurs let us see now so in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell there is a presence of the dna and the dna undergoes transcription and translation process to form mrna and the mrna consists of only exons whereas introns will be removed during splicing mechanism and now to this mrna reverse transcriptase enzyme will be used in such a way that the complementary dna strands will get formed that's what i have explained you just now so remember up to here and now how you are going to construct the cdna library by using the cdna strands now let us see it properly so to the cdna what you are going to do is that you are going to add the restriction sites so this blue color one which i have drawn are nothing but the restriction sites this dot like structures which i have mentioned here are nothing but the cdn cdna restriction sites so this restriction sites will be added at the end part of this cdna okay so now these are these are nothing but the cdna fragments but i have mentioned with the different colors so why i have mentioned with the different colors because not only similar type of cdna will be formed from this mrna different type of cdns will be formed from this mrna so that's all the reason why i have mentioned here each of the cdna with a different color so let us say one of the cdna is mentioned with green color and another cdna is mentioned with orange color and third cdna is mentioned with the red color and the fourth cdna is mentioned with the brown color and the fifth cdna is mentioned with dark blue color so remember all of this one okay so now keep this apart and on the other hand what you are going to do is that you are going to take plasmids right and now to this plasmids you are going to add the restriction enzymes and now once you add the restriction enzymes then the closed plasmids will get open because the it will get restricted some of the part of this dna strand will get re restricted i mean for example if you take adenine adenine thymine thymine nucleotide sequence that part of the nucleotide sequence will get eliminated it will get restricted such that this will get open and now what you are going to do so here cdna fragments are present right now the cdna fragments will get ligated to this plasmids by using an enzyme called as dna ligase so like this it forms like this so here this for example if you take one of the plasmid and if you take one of the cdna fragment and you are going to attach this cdna fragment to this plasmid so in the general words i am saying so in the scientific words what you have to say is that you have to ligate the cdna to this plasmid and once you ligate the cdna to the plasmid then it forms the structure like this all right so here there is a the presence of the cdna fragment so this nothing but i have mentioned with a this is a plasmid a because we have injected this cdna a right and in the same way for remaining plasmids also you are going to ligate this cdna fragments so a b c d e totally five plasmids are present in the same way totally five cdna fragments will be present and each of these cdna fragments will get ligated to this plasmids and now what you are going to do with this ligated plasmids so if you see here properly these are the five different five different type of five different type of cloned plasmids so what are you going to call the students cloned plasmids so cloned plasmids and now what you are going to do here you are going to apply the rdna technology so this cloned plasmids will be injected into the e coli bacterial cells which is called as a host cells so by using rdna technology method like electroporation you are going to inject this clone plasmids into this bacterial host cells and the bacterial host cells which you are going to use is nothing but the escherichia coli right so electroporation i have explained detail explanation of this electroporation has been given and the video is already uploaded and the link of that video will be given in the description box so firstly watch that video of this electroporation such that you can understand how these clone plasmids will get injected into this e coli bacterial cells so once you inject this clone plasmids into the e coli bacterial cells then what you are going to do with this e coli bacterial cells you are going to arrange this e coli bacterial cells into petri plate or as a petri dish so let's say this is your petri plate or as petri dish right you are going to arrange each of them individually right and now we know that this e coli bacterial cells has a capacity to undergo the cell division process 
and once the cell division process occurs then immediately the number the, the number of the bacterial cells will also get increased in such a way that the colonies will be produced so i have mentioned here in a circular way which indicates each of these indicates the colonies so here in the type of a a type of bacteria will get divided and forms a colony of a and here the b bacteria will get divided and forms a colony of b in the same way c d e all of these bacteria cells will get divided by itself in such a way that it forms the different colonies in that way different colonies will be formed so that's what i have mentioned here colonies with different bacteria which will be present in the petri dish right so i have said you in the beginning of the video what i have said you library is nothing but the for example if you take in the case of a books so different type of books which are present in a case is called as a library in the same way the different type of bacteria which has been cultured in a petri dish or a petri dish is called as a cdna library right so, so this is called as a cdna library so now coming to the definition so what i have said you at the definition so cdna library is a combination of cloned dna fragments inserted in a collections of host cells which are arranged in a petri plate so dna library is a combination of cloned dna fragments inserted in the collections of host cells so host cells are nothing but the e coli cells so in this e coli cells what you are going to do you are going to add this cloned plasmids into this e coli cells and once you culture them they are arranged in a petri plate that's what i have mentioned in the definition they are arranged in a petri plate which are arranged in a petri plate are called as cdna library or it is called as a cdna library so hope you would understand this video and if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box and the notes of this topic will be given in the whatsapp group and the invite link of that whatsapp group will be given in the description box so by using that link you can join us through the whatsapp group thank you